What's your fault? No, I'm just trying to help her get out of it. She's not your daughter. I know, but if we did have a daughter, she'd be about her age. You're not her mother. I have maternal instincts. <coughs> well, she doesn't get out. I just thought it might be nice if someone asked her for a date. What did you do? Well, do you remember that young man, Alex? Alex, he's a self-absorbed bartender. It's only supposed to be company, not an engagement. Okay. Well, she said everything was going great. They laughed, they talked. They had a lot in common. It sounds like everything went well. Until he excused himself to go to the restroom. Oh? He never came back. She was completely humiliated. Oh, don't blame yourself. You tried. He could have at least ended the date politely. She really had her feelings hurt. There are plenty of other men out there. She'll find someone. She won't if she doesn't get out now. <laughs> I just want you to get better. <laughs> Tom? <laughs> Tom? <laughs> Um, I don't know what to do. Tom's breathing has suddenly gotten much worse. Tom? He's not breathing. Tom? gonna be okay. I know. I know. Oh. We, we just have to get you to the hospital.
this what you were looking for? Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. So, um, what's the big news that requires polished silver? I put a lot of thought into it, and I think I'm going to start renting out the cottage again. I have a young couple coming today. Really? You changed your mind. I need to start doing something with myself. Besides, Tom would want me to. This cottage wants to be enjoyed by newlyweds. I think that sounds romantic. I know it sounds silly, but when I was a little girl, I used to imagine having my honeymoon here. <laughs> Don't worry. You just need to give it some time. You haven't been buying over a week. Is everything all right? Yeah, I've just been picking up some extra shifts at work. I feel like I live there most of the time, but huh, sure beats sitting around alone at home every day. <laughs> what about your friends? You spend time with them, right? Well, not really. Yeah, everyone has a family. They're too busy. Are you seeing anyone? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, every man I meet is either crazy, just looking to get laid, or not interested in me. Well, it's not as hopeless as you're making it sound. You'll meet someone. <laughs> well, how's that look? Like new. So, uh, who's coming by today? Met the groom to be. He's in the military. The Marines, I think. Good looking guy. Oh no. It's them. Oh. They're here early. Can you open the door and I'll put this away? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Hi. Is Mrs. Minute here? Yeah. And she should be here in a second. <laughs> Can I get you guys anything? No, no, thank you. We're fine. I heard you guys are renting the cottage for your honeymoon. Oh, we actually haven't decided yet. Which is lucky, because otherwise I wouldn't have found this place. <laughs> what he's not telling you is that our other option is an eight-week honeymoon trip to Europe. But to hear Oliver talk about it, it's as if he's being sent to the electric chair. The electric chair? Here I thought marriage was just a life sentence. <laughs> uh, Oliver Bradshaw. This is Susan. Hello. I'm Laura. Laura Pennington. I'm, I'm the neighbor. Grew up next door. We're friends. I'm just helping out today, you know, so she, she should be here any second. I love this place. I can't believe it exists. I mean, it looks like stepping back in time or something. Oliver. Oh. It's good to see you again. This must be Susan. Mm -hmm. A pleasure. Oliver has had nothing but nice things to say about you. You see, honey, I told you, I never say anything but nice things about you. Did he tell you about our home, how he found us? Um, one of his road trips, I think. I happened to be driving by one day and it caught my attention and just had to stop by and take a look around. Well, let me tell you a little about my home. The cottage was originally built in London in the early 1800s as a vacation home for a young lord and his wife. The wife felt so at peace here that they decided to move it to the United States and live in it as their primary residence. How did they do that? Actually, it was taken in sections by ship and reassembled when it got here. They brought it here in sections? It gets even better. There's a tradition of having honeymooners stay here that started with the first owner and has continued for 150 years. Mm -hmm. My husband and I spent our honeymoon here. Mrs. Minute, would you mind showing Susan around and working your magic on her like you did on me? I'm not quite sure she's as enthusiastic about your home as I am. Uh, no, Oliver, this place is charming. I'd be delighted to stay here sometime. And I'm certain that for some couples, this is the perfect honeymoon retreat. I'm just not sure it's right for us. Mm. You're gonna have your work cut out for you, Mrs. Minnett. I think your decision will be easy after I show you around. The cottage never lets true love walk away. Well, go on, Susan, I've already taken the tour. And honey, give it a chance. I'll do my best. I'm gonna make a very handsome groom. Thank you. I didn't mean that in a flirty way, though. I didn't think you did. I just never say the things that are on my mind, and I'm, I'm trying to break that habit, because otherwise my friends say I'll never get a boyfriend. <laughs> not that I'm implying that I was thinking of you in that way, because I wasn't. <laughs> not, well, not that you're not attractive, because you are. I mean, you're, you're like, gorgeous. <laughs> I'm shutting up now. No, it's it. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so how'd the two of you meet? Uh, our families have been friends since before I was born. So we kind of grew up together. 
childhood sweethearts. No, we, we got close in college. Everyone said we were meant to be together. That's lovely. Most people say it sounds like an arranged marriage. <laughs> Have you set a date? No, not yet, but if it was up to Susan, it'd probably be this weekend. She's very excited about it. How are you? Yeah, I am. I, I think I am. After all, I am the groom-to-be. I'm sure you'll have a lovely wedding. If your fiancé likes it here, I, I hope you come in the spring. It's, it's really pretty when the flowers bloom, and she seems like a lovely woman. She has everything a guy would, would hope for, I imagine. She's pretty and smart, and you love her. Huh? Did Mrs. Minnett show you the windows? Uh, um, these are the names of the couples who've stayed here. It, there's a, an old story that says if you spend your honeymoon here and, and write your name on the windows, that the cottage will bless your marriage. <laughs> Pearl and Sam Nisbet, 1936. Wendy and Kelly Williams, 1842. Wow, there's wow, a lot of couples have stayed here. Oh, there's uh, pictures of some of the couples here too. Everyone looks so serious. <laughs> they look happy. There's something special within these walls and it has embraced us. The depth of love we have felt for one another under this magical roof has taken our beautiful love and strengthened us in a way we could never imagine. Everything is more potent, more intense, more beautiful because we have rested our heads on these pillows. To those who find these words, know that there is something here which transcends. Something extraordinary. Wow, they, they wrote so beautifully back then. Mm. Oh, this is um, Mrs. Minnett and her husband, Tom. Hmm. She's so young there. Mm. I like to look at this book from time to time and just imagine all of the couples who stayed here. I think the cottage is enchanted. Enchanted? Yeah, I think that every time couples come into the cottage, their love was somehow, uh, somehow magnified. Hmm. So, what do you think? I admit this place has its charm. It's well, I have it on first-hand account that this place is not only charming, it's enchanted. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that if we spend our honeymoon here, we will live happily ever after. So, what do you say? If it makes you happy, we can stay Great, here. then it's settled. Mrs. Minnett, I will get you a check, and Susan and I will pick out a date. Oliver. Oh, sorry, we have to go. Good to see you, Mrs. Minnett. Well, it's good to see you. Thank yeah. you, um... Oh, Laura. Sorry. Laura. Yeah. We'll be seeing you again shortly, I'm sure. Well, it's good to see you again. Good to see you nice as well. Nice to meet you, my course. Take care. Bye. Hello? Hey, what's up? What? What's up? Turn on the TV. being reconsidered. I have no idea. Of course you don't. 
Did you call your friend in the State Department and have them change my deployment? Why would you do that? Why? You're my son. I don't want you putting your life at that risk. That is not your decision to make. Going off to war is a mistake. If you're determined to serve, at least you can serve your time here in the States. I'm going to do this whether you want me to or not. I have to. You don't understand. There are no heroes in war. Just the dead. Let everyone else go off and fight. Why, of all the paths you could take, must it be this one? If anything happened to you, your mother... Do not make this about mom. I promise I'd watch her. And you have. But right now, the country needs everyone that it can get. Did you see what they did to us? If I don't go, I will regret it for the rest of my life. You need to make this right, Dad. Dear Mrs. Minnett, I wanted to first thank you for your kindness in showing Oliver and me around when we visited your lovely cottage. Unfortunately, we will have to wait to celebrate our wedding and honeymoon as Oliver has been called to duty overseas. At the moment, I am not sure when we will be wanting to stay. It is our intention to celebrate our honeymoon there when he returns, and I will keep you posted as his schedule and your plans become more clear. And he wanted to let you know that he looks forward to staying there and wanted me to send a check to pay for any inconvenience that we may have caused. Again, thank you for the effort you have put in on our behalf. Sincerely, Susan Layton. I know that the families of our military are praying that all those who serve will return safely and soon. Millions of Americans are praying with you for the safety of your loved ones and for the protection of the innocent. startled me. Quick, come in. Hey, what's going on? I, I heard the car and saw those people. Are you okay? I need your help. Okay, were those guys military? What's going on? Remember that young Marine who wanted to stay here for his honeymoon? Hey, Mr. Bradshaw? Yes. Um, well, he's here and he's not well. Not well? Where, where is he? Um, he's down there. I mean, What happened to him? Who were those people? His friends, I imagine. He... Is he okay? What happened to him? <sighs> he just said he was injured. Okay, well, he has a fever, right? I... Look, I, I don't think we should be doing this. Uh, did they leave a number or anything? No, and he insisted that we tell no one that he's here. Why? Come on, his family's going to be wondering where he is. Are you sure the hospital even let him leave? Because you could get in a lot of trouble for this. I'm aware. All right, well, they shouldn't have moved him. Right, he may have told you he was ready, but he wasn't. I will see what I can do, but if he doesn't get better soon, we have to take him back to the hospital. Understood? Of course. All right, Oliver. What happened to you?
How is he? Uh, a little better, I think. He's going to need something for his pain. But I have a friend at the VA who owes me a favor, so I can probably find out what kind of medications he left behind at the hospital. I'm just going to head into work to make the calls and then get him what he needs. You can't leave. What am I supposed to do while you're gone? Just keep him hydrated as best you can. Uh, give him water or juice. He's taking small sips now. And I'll be back with something as soon as I can. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> All right. I was worried about you for a while there, Oliver. Hmm. How are you feeling? I'm, I've been better. Are you, are you hungry? I mean, you should eat. I brought soup. Hmm. Hmm. Some of the best soup I've ever had. It's Mrs. Minute's secret recipe. <laughs> um, well, I read over your medical record and... I mean, I, I don't have to tell you what happened to your face and chest, so you're gonna need some physical therapy and maybe some help to get past the, the trauma of what you've experienced. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? No. Why did you leave the hospital? I couldn't stand all the people staring at me. And they were whispering under their breaths. And I didn't want to. They didn't want them to see me. Who? My father and Susan. So I had a couple of my buddies bring me here. Why here? <laughs> it's the most secluded place I could think of. And I thought I could use a little enchantment. <laughs> Do you have a mirror? Maybe not now. Please. You know, but you've been through a lot. Um, and your family has to be worried. You can give me their number. I'll call, let them know you're okay. Do you have my things? Um, yeah. Hold this. Could you bring that to me, please? Hey, do you want me to get you something? No. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to be alone. I was just thinking that... Don't. Please. Hi, 
Uh, yeah, my name's Laura. Um, I was hoping to speak with a Mr. Bradshaw. Your father's here to see you. Don't look. Let me see. They did quite a number on you, son. Is this where you tell me you told me so? If so, I don't want to talk about it. What were you thinking, leaving the hospital? You had me worried to death. Were you through hiding out? Do you understand? No, I don't understand. Can you just skip the lecture? I'm not in the mood for it. No, I didn't come all this way just to leave you here. You're going back home where you can recover. It's not going to do you any good staying here feeling sorry for yourself. There are soldiers in far worse condition. You don't see them hiding themselves from the world. That's why they call it hiding. Don't be so dramatic. You make it sound like being sent home is a prison sentence. I don't want to argue with you, but right now, I'm not going anywhere. Then what do I tell Susan? Tell her whatever you want. Do you understand? I just want to be left alone. I could have gone better. Who's been taking care of him? A neighbor. But she's a nurse and a friend. She comes by when she's not at the hospital. She good? Oliver seems to think so. Let me know what she needs to take care of him full time. Whatever she needs, twice her hospital salary, if that'll do it. I'll cover all the costs. Maybe an ass would be still my son. Let me know if he needs anything, okay? I will. You know, you're quite the mystery to me. <laughs> yeah, how's that? Well, you just seem to appear whenever I need you, and I don't really know anything about you. Um, all right, well, what would you like to know? I don't know. Tell me anything. Oh, my life's not very interesting. <laughs> I've been lying in a bed for several weeks right now. <laughs> Everything is interesting. Um, okay, well, my parents died a few years ago. Uh, I don't have any brothers or sisters. I've lived in White Oak my whole life. I've never really left. Um, I'm a nurse, but you know that. I like to read. <laughs> I don't know. Fascinating. <laughs> That covers it all. Romances? Oh, I'm sorry. You don't. You don't have to talk about it no, if you don't no, want it's, to. It's okay. Um, I know this sounds kind of stupid, but uh, the truth is, I've never really had a boyfriend. So. Never ever. You're making fun of me, aren't you? No, no. Why? Why would that be funny? I'm. I'm awkward. No. At least around men, I'm awkward. Mm, you, don't, you don't seem that way around me. Yeah, you're patient. <laughs> oh, well, no, and a friend, mm. and a friend. Mm. I. Oh, it's just that I don't, I don't have to impress you. I don't, well, not that I would have to impress a man. It's just, you know, I wouldn't want to act like an idiot in front of someone, especially, you know, someone whom I found attractive. Not, well, not that I find you attractive. Well, and, and not that you're not attractive, because you are very, but, like, attractive. Okay, I'm shutting up now. <laughs> you know, I really like you, Laura. I like you, too. Mr. Bradshaw, you have a visitor. I'm sorry, sir. Mrs. Minnett. I'm not uh, in the mood for visitors right now. So I take it I'm an intrusion. No, sir, it's... Maury Hillgrove, pleasure to meet you. Major Maury Hillgrove. Did Veteran Affairs send you? No, I decided to stop by and introduce myself. Let you know that if you need anyone to talk to, I'm available. 
So then my father sent you. I think your father thought you might appreciate a friend. I think my father missed the point. I came here for the express purpose of being alone. They told me you were injured. I have burns, scars on my face and chest. I keep hearing sounds of the war. I can't sleep. I have a recurring nightmare where, th sir, I don't need to be rude, but if you came here to give me some sort of pep talk or tell me how everything is going to be just fine. I wouldn't presume to tell you how you should feel. Wouldn't do any good. I think I have to agree with you. Look, I just came here to introduce myself. I came to be the conduit for you to see the outside world. Frankly, for someone who's blind, I've seen a great deal. I've seen men just like you. You didn't like the life you had before, and now that it's gone, you want it back so badly you can't appreciate the life ahead of you. You don't know anything about me. True. Your father said that he didn't want you to serve. Do you doubt your service now? It was a waste of time and it was a waste of lives. We could argue that. Depends on your point of view. Did you ever serve in combat, sir? Vietnam. Lost my eyesight there. Sorry. You adapt. You know, sometimes an injury can help you see the beauty that you couldn't see before. How was that? Oh, I have to rely on my other senses. Touch, smell, sound. I mean, the world's exactly the same, but the, the appreciation is vastly different. You oh, and better. You can't tell me that you don't miss your eyesight. Oh, I do, I do, time and again. But I realized that no matter how much I dwelt on it, nothing was going to change. If I wanted to be happier, I had to make it happen for myself. Now, I also realized, just because you're injured, your life isn't over. I think we'll just have to agree to disagree then. Or you could just take my word for it. All I can say is that it gets easier. Well, I don't want to overstay my welcome. And it's usually about this point that I'm asked if I'm coming back. And will you? But you'd never ask. Shouldn't you buy me a drink first? <laughs> buy you a drink? Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. <sighs> oh, when you can walk again, you'll be doing the buying. <laughs> <sighs> Which won't take very long. Now, before you know it, you're going to be running. <laughs> Wanna be a good dancer too? Yeah, of course. Great, because I was awful before. <laughs> okay, you're terrible. I just keep pumping those legs. They're not gonna rebuild themselves. Yes. We can make him better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. <laughs> you know those. Oh, um, six million dollar man? Yeah. Come on, who doesn't? My dad and I used to watch old reruns when I was a kid. Surprise. Are you transferring me to a senior citizen center? It's a walker. <laughs> you know, I think I preferred it when you drove me, Hoke. Ah, uh, well, I'm so sorry, Miss Daisy, but you're gonna have to find your way to the Piggly Wiggly all on your own from now on. You ready to try to walk? Okay. So the first thing we need you to do is just stand up. But to do that, you're going to push with your arms up on the walker. Okay, and then you're gonna just stand up really straight. Ready? Push. There you go. Good. All right. It's okay. So that was the easy part. We're gonna <laughs> take a couple of steps. Okay, so we're just gonna do the same thing over and over again, right? We're gonna push forward, mm -hmm. you're gonna take a few steps, and then you're gonna stand up straight. Okay, ready? Push forward. Again, push forward, take a couple steps, stand up really straight. Good, see? Go! 
like I should be recording this or something. You're like, <laughs> Neil Armstrong taking your first steps on the moon. <laughs> no? Good. He was in great spirits. It was one of those amazing learning things. I could actually hear him smiling. I can see how that might be rewarding on a number of levels. So how about you? What about me? Smiling these days? A bit. That's a start. I've told you the inside takes much, much longer, longer than, than the, the outside, outside to heal. heal. Yes. Once or twice. You also told me I'd start to learn who I'm to become, but I only seem to know who I'm not. Hmm. What do I do? Do I just wait until I wake up one morning and know who I am? I suspect that until you let go of who you were, you won't be able to define who you are. You need to resolve things with the people you left behind, the ones you're hiding from. My father. And Susan. Oliver. You might not want to come any closer. I brought you something. Thanks. You know I love you, no matter what's happened to you. Really? How can you say that? I haven't seen you for months. Why didn't you call me? I wasn't ready. Nothing. I take it my father didn't tell you what to expect. It's not that, I just... Didn't expect a freak. You know what? I'm sorry. I knew that this was a bad idea. I'm no longer the pretty picture of a husband that you had in mind. I mean, can you imagine? Family formal dinners. I'd have everyone talking. Oh, poor Susan. Such a pity. Oliver, I haven't said anything. No. Yet. But your silence has spoken volumes. I saw those same looks in the hospital. It's what happens next that's worse, but you have to see it all to get the full picture. Oliver, what are you doing? You wanted to see me, so look. I'd wanted to write you, but since you've come, I think it's only fair that you heard it from me directly. I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. You, mean you know what I mean. It's a mercy, really. I don't want to be engaged. I don't want to get married. And I don't want to be in a relationship with you anymore. Why, Oliver? Do you really have to make this worse than it already is? Is it really necessary for everybody to know why? Isn't it enough that this is what I want? I love you. Do you? You want to know the truth, Susan? The truth is that our parents set us up when we were kids, not because they thought that we were perfect for each other, but because they thought our families would be stronger together. And you know what? They were probably right. But everything has changed. And I am not that man anymore. I was only doing what I was supposed to do. Do you understand? Now go. Trust me. Your life will be much better without me.
don't think I've been very good at following the Major's advice lately. Why is that? I wasn't ready for Susan's reaction. What happened? Well, the short version is that we broke up. But... Still doesn't justify the way I handled it. So, what are you gonna do? What can I do? She'll be much better off without me. Laura, I just wanted to say I really appreciate these walks. They, um, they really mean a lot and help me to... Yeah, I, I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the, the Major says that if I want to fully recover, I have to figure out who I am. Uh -huh. On the inside? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I never really thought about it before. I mean, I had ideas, what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Have you ever asked yourself, what do I want? Yeah. Um, for me, it's easy. You know, it's a simple life, a successful career, uh, a husband, maybe children. Mm -hmm. I guess. Everything society says you're supposed to want. I used to think that's what I wanted, but now I... I don't know, everything just seems so cloudy. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Or get you a new crystal ball. <laughs> right now I think I'd settle for a magic eight ball. <laughs> yes. Check back later. <laughs> Why are we making spaghetti again? Ah, uh, yeah, you'll see. Ah, uh, and the mysterious shroud around the pasta preparation continues. I know. Ooh. Here. Open your mouth. What? <laughs> what are you doing? Just trust me. Look no, that way. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> huh? Okay. All right. Now, eat. <laughs> okay. All we need is an accordion playing in the background. <clears throat> are you two going to keep goofing off, or are you ready to take food to the table? So, what is the big mystery? I made spaghetti in honor of Tom's birthday. It was his favorite meal. Tom preferred staying home with me and eating my spaghetti over having a party of going out to eat. I don't make him like Tom anymore. Mm. Oh. <laughs> No offense, Mitt Oliver. Oh, none taken. <laughs> oh. no. Have you thought about dating, though? No. It's different when you're with the right person. I don't need to date anyone else. No, I'll see him soon enough. Hmm. Well, I'm going to leave the two of you to dinner, and hmm. uh, I'm going to go visit my husband. <clears throat> That was sweet, and kind of sad. I envy them. You make it sound like it's something you'll never have. Oh. Stop. <laughs> Where's the pasta sauce? Over there. When I was in Iraq, it was... A few of us got orders to set up a perimeter. My buddies and me. It's hot there. The heat hits you in the face like a brick. You can barely breathe, you can barely see. We heard all hell breaking loose. Machine guns, artillery, RPGs. There was a crowd coming towards us. And we yelled at them to stay back. 
but there was too many of them. The people started scrambling, and I only had a second or so to see whether any of them had guns. We had a very strict policy on not engaging civilians. Remember, there was this one woman. She was staring at me, and all I could see was her eyes. And she was calling for her husband, and she was trying to push back me, and I was holding her back. I should have kept my eyes open. The next thing I knew, an RPG went off. My buddy Ramirez, he was there, and then he was gone. Then I felt this stinging on my face, on my, on my hair. I was on fire. But I fell over. And they were on me, pecking at me like birds. People punching me, slapping me, spitting on me. And half of my face was in the sand. And I was almost nose to nose with O'Donnell, this farmer from Iowa. He was ripped in half. But I kept staring at his face, his eyes. It was like he was asking me to help him, but there was nothing I could do. Then I heard the rumbling of the 50 cal, mowing down everyone around me. Everyone was gone, except me. I remember being looked at, carried off. And then darkness. So every time a glass breaks or a door slams, I'm back there. I keep replaying it in my mind over and over like a broken record. Maybe if I'd paid a little bit more attention, I could have done something. My friends wouldn't be dead. It should have been me. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Over. How was your visit? Day is always hard. No, are you okay? Fine. I'm not fine. Well, to Oliver, he had a rough night. He told me about what happened to him, and I don't think he was ready to talk about it. No, I think I should raise a concern. All right. What is the nature of your interest in Oliver? I think I might be starting to have feelings for him, and my interest lies somewhere in that. I know, I know I shouldn't feel anything. He's a patient, but we have this connection. Is it a connection or is it a pity? Well, I'm not sure. Laura. I know, I, I know. I'm not going to tell you what you should do. But I don't want to see you get hurt. Or him been through enough. He has to get back to his life. I know, but I don't want to let him go. Talk. It's usually the universal sign for bad news. Oh, I, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I need to go back to work. You know, they need me, and um, I feel like I should move on. Wait a minute, I, I still need you. No, no, you don't. I'm, every day you're better, stronger, and I feel like I might just be holding you back now. I, so. I don't understand. Um, 
I think that I think that I might be starting to have feelings for you and I'm not supposed to do that. So I need to get back to work, back to my life and so do you. Oh, I just, I just wanted to say goodbye. I'm sorry, I have to go. Wait, 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 what, what if, what if there was something more between us? What do you mean? What if, what if I asked you to marry me? What? What if I was your husband? Okay, well, what, what do you mean by that? I mean, if you want me to marry you so that you have someone to take care of you, there, there must be dozens of beautiful women who would be willing to do that. A beautiful woman? What beautiful woman would want to marry me? I see. You want me to marry you because I possess the special qualification of being unattractive. No, Laura. I see. No. What I meant was that no one would ever take the time to, to get to know me or accept me for who I am. Who you are. That's the question, isn't it? It is. I know that no one will ever want to be with me the way that I look. I just thought that we could, could live together and be friends. I, I know that I can't offer you anything more than that. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. Don't be. It's not like I'm unaware of how I look. I guess it was just the shock of hearing it put so bluntly. You know, you need to understand something. If you ever approach a woman who's unattractive the way you just did, remember this, okay? Even, even an ugly woman, as conscious as she may be of her defects, has dreams, okay? Dreams where she is where she is lovely and desirable. And to spare her, to complete an awakening, is a charity. Laura. We just think about it. Yeah. yeah, yes, I'm Laura. Uh, you must be Mr. Bradshaw. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, I wish you were under better circumstances. I must admit, it was a surprise when I received a phone call from my son telling me he was getting married. It was even more of a surprise to find out it wasn't to his fiance. An explanation, please. Well, all Oliver and I have grown close over the past few months. <laughs> and you actually think he loves you? I don't know. I don't mean to spoil the illusion, but I think we both know better than that. Oliver hasn't been himself since he returned. You have to know that. So, what is it? Why are you doing it? If it's a matter of money, I can uh, take care of that. You're here to get rid of me, aren't you? I'm here to prevent a mistake that should never happen. What do you want, Laura? Hundred thousand? No. A million? No, there isn't any amount I would take. Okay, it isn't about that for me. Enlighten me, please. I love Oliver. That's not true. If you loved him, 
You know he's no position to decide to get married. Look, I thought I could leave. I tried. Okay, but I can't. Look, I don't know what you've been through, Mr. Bradshaw, and I... I can't imagine what it must be like to have a son injured in the war. And I know you only wish what is best for Oliver. I do. So do I. Look, I am a woman of no great distinction. Okay, I know I'm not what many would consider pretty. I'm not from a family of great affluence. When all is said and done, I'm not sure if my life will have mattered to anyone when I die, but I can tell you this. Oliver will not be unhappy. Look, in the short time that I have known him, his life has been better because of me. He's not the person he used to be, and you're right, he's not the person he's going to be yet, but if I can help him to find himself again, then then I think that that is a worthy cause for my life. Every person has a value, Mr. Bradshaw, but that value is not measured in position or possessions. A person's value is measured in love, and if that is true, then God, Oliver is going to be the richest man in the world. I don't want to lose my son. Oh, you won't. You're a strong woman, Laura. I am. I'm realizing now that my coming here is a mistake. I thought that you would have more sense. Oliver's going to do what he's going to do. I just want you to know I don't agree with this decision. I know. Take care of my son. I will. Why aren't you talking to me? You know the reason. No, I don't. We shouldn't have gotten married. Are you giving up already? I'm not giving up. Okay, then what is it? <laughs> if you didn't want to do this, then why did you ask me in the first place? You're the one who told me. I married you because I didn't want to face the world. Laura. What? I'm sorry. Don't be. God, it's my fault. I feel like such an idiot. 
I don't want to hurt you. It's, it's just... It's just what? I'm doing this for you. Oh, please spare me. I've come up with every rationalization to justify marrying you. I didn't want to be alone. I wanted someone to take care of me. Everything was I, I, I. Don't, I was being selfish. Don't, don't lie to me. I'm not, I'm not what you want. I never have been. You're wrong. You are the kindest person I have ever met. You understand me better than anyone. I know how selfish I've been lately. The only reason anyone would want to marry me is out of pity. You're wrong, you know. What do you mean? I didn't marry you out of pity. Then why did you do it? Because I love you. You love me? Since the moment I met you. But Laura, how could you love me? You know who I am. You know what happened to me. I know, and I want you to be happy. So, if ending our marriage will do that, then I get it. No, you don't. Laura. There are a thousand and one ways that you've saved me since I met you. You're the finest person I've ever met. You're smart. You're funny. You're beautiful. I'm not. You are. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever met. Laura, I love you. I do. I love you, Laura. That was... Beautiful. I love you, Oliver. I love you, too. <laughs> <sighs> Sex is great. No, no. I know you read about it and everything, but... Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I feel pretty good myself. Seriously? Mm-hmm.
just okay <laughs> you've got to be kidding me that was amazing just wait until i get better at it you think you're up for a challenge yeah all right i guess we'll find out i guess so <laughs> where are you going oh we never had a chance to eat our wedding cake and i don't know what you're supposed to eat after making love for the first time but cake sounds kind of amazing i'll get a knife here. Let's do it right. <laughs> oh, very romantic. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's freaking good cake. <laughs> you know what? Mm. I'm happy. Me too. <laughs> so, husband. Actually, when I need to come up with a better nickname for you, husband doesn't sound quite right. How about genius? <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Or, uh, your highness. Oh. How about, um, ass? I like it. <laughs> Fits well. You know, I always knew you were going to be my husband. You did? I know this sounds silly, but uh, there was something about you, something about your face that seemed all familiar. Like a puzzle piece that fits right. <laughs> You're so handsome, Oliver. What? Your your face, your scars. There. What? Look, look, look. I don't understand. How could they... They're, they're gone. Okay, that's impossible. Or it's a miracle. I mean, it, it could be a miracle, right? No, Laura. It's not just me. Look, look at yourself. Oh my god. Oh my god. This, this doesn't make any sense. <gasps> it doesn't. I mean, this, this can't be real, right? It has to be a, a dream or something. Things things like this aren't possible. They don't, they don't, they don't just happen. They don't? No. But the, there has to be some explanation. I think I know what it is. What? The cottage. It has to be, right? The cottage? Yeah, it's enchanted, remember? Oh, come on. You don't believe that the, chan the cottage is actually enchanted, do you? No, think about it. All of the happy couples who've been through here, it has to be connected to that in some way, don't you think? No. Okay, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe there's something in the book. Huh? The one that I showed you when you first visited. You know what? Right now, I don't want to know. Of course, Laura. Is, is everything okay? Yes. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, your phone call had me worried. What's going on? Wait. Something's different. Did you do something to the room? No. Hmm. Something's different. I don't think you'll be able to guess this, Major. You're here. Are you two going to keep me in suspense? What is it that uh, you couldn't tell me on the telephone? You might want to sit down. All right, now I'm really concerned. <laughs> we need some advice. Advice? Yeah. I'm not sure how to say this. You're never going to believe us. What? I'm beautiful. It's true. She is. She's, she's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful? Okay. Uh, I don't understand.
Feel my face. Feel that? My scars are gone. How could this have happened? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure I understand everything. It's starting to scare me, Major. Why? Well, I know what I'm about to say sounds crazy, but Laura thinks that we're under an, I don't know any other way to say it, but some sort of spell or enchantment and that somehow the cottage is what allowed it to happen. What's the cottage got to do with this? Well, you just felt it. You said there was something about the cottage, that there was something different about it. <laughs> yes, well, I'm not sure that's what I meant when I said that. Let's take it a, a deep breath. When did this uh, change happen? Shortly after the wedding, almost as soon as we entered the cottage. Yeah, it was right after dinner. It was a gradual change. It, it didn't happen all at once. I just remember looking at Laura and she was so beautiful. Oliver's change was different. His scars seemed to go away a little bit at a time. I have to admit, this is, it's hard to understand, but isn't this good? Yes. So what's the problem? Well, Laura has it in her head that if it is some sort of enchantment, I can't believe I'm saying this, but, uh, well, that if it is, if we leave the cottage, then it will go away and we'll go back to the way that we were. That's why we wanted to talk to you. We thought you might be able to explain it. Because we can't. <laughs> I mean, right, there has to be some sort of explanation. Well, you know, I've, I've prayed for miracles myself. I have a faith that if you believe, if you pray, anything can happen. But if I were you, I would spend less time asking why <laughs> and more time enjoying this incredible gift you've been given. As for how long it's going to last, well, that's one of life's surprising things. You never know anything until you know. So just be thankful. <laughs> You've been given a gift that no one I know has ever been given. I am thankful. We both are. Well, a miracle has certainly happened here tonight, one way or another. You've given me something quite remarkable to think about. I don't think I'm gonna sleep tonight. It's not often you get to ponder real-life miracles. I'm gonna leave you two here. The last thing you need is me here during your honeymoon. Come on, Major. Thanks, Major. Good night. Good night. His theory? A heaven sent miracle? Do you? I, I don't know what to believe. Me either. Was this something you want to keep a secret? I don't know that we could even if we wanted to. The sooner or later, everyone's going to find out. I'd like to tell my father first. Sure. We'll see if he can come over tomorrow. Have the major talk to him first. Okay. Well, until then. Good night, James and Kate Winslow. Good night, Jack and Rose. It doesn't say that. Don't let go, Jack. Don't ever let go. You're so cold. <laughs> Good night, Oliver and Laura Bradshaw. They're my favorite couple. Me too. <laughs> I'll race you there. Come in. Mr. Bradshaw, I presume. Hello, Major. I didn't expect to see you here. Oliver called, said he uh, wanted to discuss a family matter. He asked me to speak to you first. What's this about? Where is he? Oh, he'll be right down. He wanted me to prepare you. For what? 
Here's some good news. Do you believe in miracles? <laughs> miracles. Modern miracles. Miracles that can happen to you or to me. I can't say that I do. Well, if you don't, this is going to be interesting. It's what Oliver asked me to share with you. A miracle has happened to them. They can't explain it, but they've both been touched by a power beyond what we know. They've changed. Changed? Yes. Oliver is healed. His injuries are completely gone. And Laura, I know that you did not approve of his choice of a wife, but she is as beautiful as the deepest meaning of the word. You don't expect me to believe that. I didn't expect that you would. But I've done what was requested of me anyway. Um, Mr. Bradshaw, if I may, a bit of advice. Your son has come a long way since he arrived here. Give him at least the courtesy of a reserved response on your part. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Oliver, Laura, it's time. Thanks for coming, Dad. Bye. And you've met Laura? It's nice Laura. to see you again. <laughs> yeah, how's my son been treating him? Uh, he's been wonderful. <laughs> We've been very happy. Then marriage suits you. Thank you. Um, would you like to have a seat? Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, Hillgrove, tell me about this change. It's amazing, isn't it? We didn't know what to make of it at first. It was actually a bit of an adjustment getting used to it, but we've been so happy. Dad, I, I know who I am. I know what I want to do. And the first thing I want to say is I'm sorry. I realize I haven't really been myself lately, and I want to apologize for that. You, you've reminded me about my commitments, and I know you've wanted me to work with you for a while now, and I think I'm ready to do that. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. I, I just have one caveat. I appreciate that you send the Major to come and speak with me, and so long as we can dedicate some of our resources to his work, I'd like to come and work with you and keep the family business together. I'd love to help. Just let us know what you need, Major. Thank you, I will. No, it's the least we can do. It's great to see that you're feeling better. I guess I owe thanks to both of you. And you too, Laura. I always told Oliver to get a woman of good character. This is a good change for him. He always seemed to have his eye on just the pretty ones. She's a strong woman. You're lucky to have her. Uh, I'm sorry, but I have to leave. It's, uh, it's good to see you on your feet again. When you finish your recovery, we'll uh, talk some more about your plans. Recovery? No, we don't have to talk about that now. When you're ready, I know a great plastic surgeon that can help you with your scars. Ah, I'm so glad you reached out to me. We'll have you back at 100%, no time. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry I have to run, Laura, Major. Good day. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really happy for you. Thanks, Dad. I don't understand. He said I still have scars. And he thought I was... This doesn't make sense. Can you see anything? Uh, no. Do you see my scars at all? No, I, I, I can't. What about me? You still look just as beautiful. Hey, this makes no sense. Uh, Mrs. Minute! I'm sorry. I wanted to protect you from this. From what? I don't, I don't understand. 
We haven't changed, have we? Did you always know? Yes, I have. Mrs. Minute, please tell me the truth. Can you see my scars, my burns? Well, what about Laura? Does she look different? Has her appearance changed at all? No. Mrs. Minute, look at us. There's no change in our appearance. None. Why are you so upset? It's because I can't see it? Oh, your father can't? Do you want to know the secret? The enchantment that this cottage holds? You love each other. You've fallen in love. And a man and woman in love have a gift of sight that isn't granted to other people. Keep your love strong. Keep it burning. And I promise you, you'll never be anything to one another but handsome and beautiful. Mrs. Minute, care to walk me out? I would love to. Thank you, Major. Thank you, Major. Laura, look at me. No matter what happens, I will always love you. You're the most beautiful woman in the world, inside and out. I love you, Oliver. Always have, always will. You know, we never got to write our name on the windows with the other couples. <laughs> well, I guess it's about time we did. <laughs> After you, Mrs. Bradshaw. <laughs> <laughs>